Our next step is to look at what we're going to call diagrams of continuous time systems. These are images that suppress out the time variable. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we're in continuous time dynamics. That means we're looking at systems of the form dx equals f of x. So what we're going to do is instead of focusing on the time variable, we're going to focus on that right hand side f of x. Now you know what we've done when we've looked at graphs of x versus t, and we see those solutions evolving over time, and that's pretty good. It can be a little complicated to see what's happening, but if we zoom out and think about what is happening along a different axis, along an axis that plots dx dt, the rate of change of x with respect to time, then we can graph out that function f of x. And where f of x equals zero, well, that's where the equilibria are. And then in certain regions, dx dt is going to be positive. In other regions, it's going to be negative. And that's going to wind up telling us a lot about these equilibria. At this point, I think it's worth getting very excited. What have we been doing? We have learned how to take an equilibrium in a dynamical system and linearize using Taylor expansion. Can you see what that means graphically? We've learned the stability criterion for equilibria in a continuous time dynamical system. Can you see that stability criterion emerge from the diagram? Yes, you can. If we consider just a typical system, maybe a really complicated right-hand side, look at an equilibrium. That's a place where when we graph dx dt versus x, we have a root, we have a zero. If you zoom in on that and get really, really close, then even though this function f is maybe very complicated, Locally, it looks like a linear function, and that means if we zoom in and consider the portion where dx dt is positive, and then the portion where dx dt is negative, then we're going to see that either you're increasing from the left and decreasing from the right, or maybe it's the other way around, where you're decreasing from the left and increasing from the right. And this shows off the difference between a stable and an unstable equilibrium. It's really the slope of that tangent line that tells you whether it's stable or unstable. And that's it. That's your stability criterion right there. But it's even better if we zoom back out and we consider just large scale. Where are the regions? Where the derivative is positive, that means x is increasing. Where the derivative is negative, that means x is decreasing. Then look, it doesn't really matter what is happening in between the equilibria. We could have a really, really complicated function, and the only thing that matters is what is happening right there at the equilibria. Positive slope, unstable. Negative slope, stable. That's it. That's the stability criterion. Oh, well, you know, in all of this, we've been assuming non-degenerate equilibria, where the derivative at the equilibrium is not zero. But there are degenerate equilibria as well. And maybe, maybe that's not so bad. From a Taylor series perspective, it's really hard to deal with these guys. But if we think about what is happening graphically, maybe it's not so bad. Let's think about what happens when we have a degenerate equilibrium. That means that the derivative of the right-hand side at the equilibrium is zero. This could happen in a number of different ways. For example, if we had a quadratic tangency, if we had something where the second order term was non-zero, then what that means is that it's sort of stable on one side and unstable on the other side. That's kind of weird, but it kind of makes sense. Also, we could have different orders of tangency. A cubic order tangency, for example, might still be stable or unstable, but in a nonlinear fashion. So you're really, really slowing down when you get close to that equilibrium. And in fact, we can see how looking at higher order terms of a Taylor expansion really unfolds all the different possible types of degeneracy in an equilibrium. That's really just the beginning of things that we can conclude from the diagrams. 
the geometry of the stability criterion is so clearly revealed when we look at continuous time diagrams. But I emphasize continuous time because things are going to get a little more complicated when we eventually turn to discrete time.